All right, so this is how the game starts. It gives you this little, you know, narration here. You awaken your casket to the sound of sirens and ripping metal. You barely get to the escape pods where the ship is torn apart. Sometime later, you land on this unknown rim world as pieces of the shredded starship fall around you. You start making plans to survive. First thing I do here is I hit spacebar to pause the game once my little pods here have landed um, to just sort of you know, get a lay of the land, figure out where I want to build. Um, building near these these little vents here, it lets you have geothermal power you can eventually get from these, so it's okay to be close to those. Um, picking somewhere that's relatively close to the center of the map. Um, you can make use of natural rock for formations here. You could build your little base in here. That'll give you some protection around the backside um, of the base. But the thing is, if you're close to one of the maps, um, events and raids and things can spawn from uh, any side on the map. So if you start building too close over here, you might get raided by, by you know people that'll come out from the right side here, and then you're just toast because you barely have time to um, you know, get your defenses in order. Um, so I like to start closer to, to the center of the map. Again, you can really start wherever. Um, this looks like an okay starting zone too. Um, some other things to look out for when you're starting, uh, the coloration on the ground. So you can see wherever I hover over my mouse on the bottom left part of the screen, um, you can see it gives you some information about the soil and the, and the walk speed and the light. Um, so just on the regular ground here, it says there's uh, FERT, which is the um, how fertile the ground is, that's for growing. And right now it's this is at a hundred percent so this is decent you can grow here this darker patch if you look it says 140 percent so if you plant your gardens here they're going to grow a lot better um so i'm thinking we can start building our initial shack or house right here in this clear zone uh that'll let us use this area for our garden we can eventually have geothermal power up here um you can also make use of some of the structures that are already on the map sometimes you'll get a room like if you have a room here that's a little bit bigger um, you can just use that you can throw a door right in the space and then just use that as your starting room um, so that'll save you some time but it doesn't look like we have very much of that we could use right now if there's something like this you could you know build a you know four, uh, three more walls here and make a make a room out of this wall you know that'll, that'll save on on some um, initial um, wood that 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 the game gives you um, but I think we're going to start in this area. So let's take a look at our squad and what we have here. Um, so when you see all these items here, if there's a red X over it, what that means is your, your crew, your guys, your dudes, they're not going to pick that item up. If you want them to pick it up and use it, you'll have to come into it and check the allow box. If you check that, you can see the red X goes away. That means if you have a place to store these meals, they will take it to that spot. Um, if you if you click the button again here, it'll put the red axis on it and they'll, and they'll leave it alone. This can be handy for, like I was talking about earlier, if you get like a supply drop with a bunch of cocaine and you don't want your guys to go near it, um, by default they'll have the red X on it, just leave it um, checked and they won't ever touch it. But the first thing we need to actually construct is a stockpile zone where, where they can start putting all this stuff. But first we want to equip our gear and guns with the people who need it so what you can do is select your 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 folks up here you can either click on them on the map or click on them up here this is you know all your guys will appear up here and it can be a, a good way to select them and then if you click bio you can see all those stats again so philly is our shooter we want to give him the rifle to start with so with philly selected i right click the, the rifle and select equip the rifle um we want our person uh, with the next highest shooting to have the pistol. Our next two have zero for shooting. Um, this guy's melee is really high, so we will give him the knife. And then our last guy will just give him the pistol. Uh, our rifle person, so let me just hit spacebar here to start the game with him. Equip those weapons. I'll pause again. Now I like to give the, the rifle person the actual gear, so the flak pants. Uh, flak vest and that plasteel helmet. Um, I want to give it to Philly here, so we'll say horse wear the flask. Uh, we'll 
take a minute. I hope no one else picks up the clothes. And then we want to, of course, wear the pants. And then I'm going to have her, of course, wear the helmet. Oh, and you also start with an animal, too. This is kind of cool. It's a um, it's a wolf, an, an arctic wolf, which will which is nice. Sometimes you get like a cat or a squirrel or some shit like that. Um, and it, they're really all they're good for is just food. Um, but, you know, I, I, I am a cat person, so I probably would keep the cat around. Um, first thing you want to do is build a stockpile zone to have them, to just to have a zone where you can keep all your shit. Um, and there's there's something else you need to you need to consider with your, your items too. Some items will degrade or deteriorate if they're left outdoors. Things like food, medicine, so these are our packaged survival meals. We want to put these indoors at some point soon. Our medicine right here and our components. So the com you start with 30 components. These components are really crucial for building certain items in the game uh, and you start out with just a limited supply here. You can find them more on the map later but they do deteriorate if they're left outside. So those items you want to get inside. Once we build our first shack we'll put a little zone, uh, stockpile zone inside and we'll tell them to only put our food, medicine, and our components inside to start with. But for everything else, we want to build just a stockpile zone. So I think we're going to build our hut here. Let's build our stockpile zone right here in this open area um, so they don't have to clear any of these trees away. Same thing with our hut. We'll build our hut here so they don't have to clear the trees initially. But first thing we want to do is click on Architect, uh, go to Zone, choose stockpile zone put that right here it's about this size at least to start you can always change it later and then what we want to do is we want to allow our our crew to to select these items and to move them so what you can do is if you double click on any item it will select any similar item in view of your screen so for example on these meals if I double click on one it selects them all you can see I have some steel up here and some steel down here. If I zoom in so that I can only see this steel and I double click, it just selects these four. It won't select these. If I zoom out and double click, it'll select these two. So you can see how that works. Handy if you want them to pick up all, all of one item. But basically, all the stuff we start with here, we want to uncheck that red box. We'll get the steel, the wood. We're going to use this to build our initial hut, component. I get a pop filter. Sorry about that. These get our medicine. And then we'll hit play again. Let them start cleaning this stuff up. Next thing we can do is start thinking about um, where we want our our shack to be and start giving them orders to build it. So click on architect, go down to production. Actually, let's go to structure and then wall. You can see when you select wall, it gives you items. Um, these are, it'll give you options for how you wanna build the wall. Do you want a steel wall, a silver wall, or a wooden wall? And this is based off the items that you currently have. So later as we get stone and blocks, we'll see those those items come up in here. But initially, we wanna build with, with, with wood to start out with. Now there is a flammability thing with, with, with items. If you, you know, build a bunch of wood structures, they can burn a lot easier. Um, stone doesn't burn. Uh, I don't think stone burns at all, actually. So um, eventually you can upgrade your building uh, manually by deleting walls and then re rebuilding them. Um, but eventually later you can you can move on to stone and things like that. But to start, we're just gonna build a small shack right here. Hopefully by that first night, we can get some beds and stuff like that going. So I'm gonna select wooden door, same um, deal as the wall. You can select wooden door. Put a door here and I'll put one on the other side. So this is now a good time, <clears throat> good time to talk about just the uh, user interface here uh, a bit more. You can see on the right side, it, it kind of gives you needs. So colonists need beds, they need some way to, you know, uh, solitary re relaxation, social uh, social interaction with uh, some, some rec time. Um, this gives you a time. I, I believe this is just, yeah, this is just your system time. Um, this 9H is the time in the game. So think of that as like 9 a.m. in the morning. 
Um, and then this is sort of the, the month and the year and the season. So how it works is I believe there's four months or like four quarters. You can see we're now in April, May. Um, and it's the 6th of April, May. I believe there are 15 days within one of these months. Um, move my a bit higher here. You can see the uh, little tool tip. Um, so right now it's, it's permanent summer. I guess we're going to be summer all the time. I think that that's what that means because we remember our start was more on the on the center of the planet. If you start way up north, sometimes it'll be dark for most of the day or light most of the day, uh, the day depending on the season. Your growing time will be shorter because there's less um, less months where that you, where you have a lot of daylight. So the game is pretty accurate in terms of lighting, um, temperature, seasonal changes depending on where you are on the globe. So that was one of the reasons why we we chose to be on the center of the map. Uh, the next little thing is the speed of the game here. Right now I'm just using spacebar just to start and pause it. It's on the slowest setting, just so I can have some time to talk here, but we will eventually speed that up um, as time time goes on. Um, so right now you can already see that they're building our, our hut here. Um, and you can see sometimes you get a construction botched. If they're low in construction, they'll fail the construction and they'll waste some of those resources. So um, what we can do is we want to make sure we have people performing the tasks that they're good at or that they can. And we do that with the work section at the bottom of the page. So let's select work. Um, the first thing that I like to do when I play this game is I like to check the manual priorities area here. By default, this is off and you can see there's just green check marks for, for all the stuff. And what this means is they either do it or they don't. Uh, and you can see the higher priority items are on the left, the lower priority are, are on the right. So for example, a uh, firefight is all the way on the left. It's the highest priority task. If there's a fire, I'm gonna pause it right now. If there's a fire, um, these people are gonna do that before they cook or hunt or grow or, or construct or whatever, because these are lower on the list. However, when you set it to manual priority, you can assign number values to these things. So you can say, for example, I want this guy to have a, uh, a one for construction, but only a two for, for the, the cooking. But then what that means is he will prioritize construction over cooking, even though construction is a little bit lower on the list. So I like setting this manual priorities because it gives you more control. It's just a better way to play. Uh, and I would recommend doing it. So once we sort of get our stockpile zone here, we got our first hut building. I like to go through here and set all these up for, for our guys based on what they what they are good at. So for example, if you remember, one of our people was um, incapable of firefighting, so they won't even do it. They don't even have that option here. But for everyone else, I always put that to one. Um, if there's a fire in your base, you want them to be putting that out. Uh, you want them to be doing that ahead of everything. Um, so I always set firefighting to one. Um, let's see here. Doctor. Uh, I, I, I always leave patient as, as three. Um, and what this just says is if they're hurt, uh, you know, go to bed to get healed. If there's an incident or someone's hurt, I always manually assign them to the, to the hospital bed and, and, and stuff like that. So I, I, I really just leave that as three. You can set it to, um, higher, um, up in the chain if you want to. Um, doctor, this person here, uh, and you can see if you hover over the, the um, that the task it, it it shows you their skill in there. So it's 13 out of out of 20. This person had a, had our higher um, uh, um, what's the skill um, medical skill. So what you want to do is you can set this guy to one. He's going to be our doctor. He's going to prioritize um, <clears throat> uh, being a doctor. You know if 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 folks are hurt, if they get shot, or if they need help. Um, so this guy is our doctor. Bed rest, I uh, leave it three. Basic, I leave it three. Um, warden, you want your guy with the highest social value to be your warden. What they, what that does is it's good for um, getting other, uh, um, like, uh, you might get raided by, by some people and then you can capture them and then you can convert them to your tribe and, and they will join your tribe. Um, and the warden is the one that, that um, does that task. So. Your person with the highest social will have the the best chance of doing that. They get better deals with trading, um, so so 
Um, that, that, that's that's primarily what the uh, social skill is for. Um, handle is for training animals. Um, I'll probably put that as two for this guy right now, not the highest priority. We want our cook. This guy's clearly going to be our cook. Uh, our hunter will be our best shooter to start out with. <clears throat> you can eventually... Uh, hunting is a good way to build the shooting skill of other people in your tribe. So eventually if we get more guns, um, I'll probably have people who aren't as good at hunting do the hunting so they can build their shooting skill. Uh, building up your um, arsenal and shooting skills um, early on can be really helpful because you will get attacked at some point and having your guys be able to um, shoot back, fire back uh, is going to be really handy. Um, Construct. I like to have, uh, this guy's just probably low, but initially we need two people doing construction. This guy's got zero, so we're not gonna have him do it. Our grower. Um, I like to have two people set to growing. Maybe we'll do this. Mining, don't really have to worry about that off the bat. Um, this person can be a miner, we'll put that as two for now. Plant cut is for our grower. Uh, or harvesting and chopping trees and things like that. Smithing, you don't have to worry about it right now, either for tailoring or art. You can leave those, um, but I just like to remove them off of that initially and then go back in once we figure out our crafting, our tailoring, smithing, um, and then and then we can go in um, and assign those. Hauling, hauling is uh, the task of carrying items to your stockpile zone. I always like to give one person a one with a with a hauling, and maybe another person as a two. Um, you don't want stuff left outside for a long time. And also, something else to look out for: you don't want to make sure, you don't want to be assigning everybody with a one um, because they're not going to be able to to do all that. So we can see that this person has uh, lots of ones here. Um, Already, so I'm not going to have them be the hauler. Um, see, this guy's the warden. He's hunting construction. Let's make this guy haul, and this guy can be the two. Cleaning. It's good to have one person clean. Put this as a two, and then one for our researcher. I think this is good to start. So that is how the work tab works it just makes sure that you, that you have the people working on tasks that they're good at as i explained earlier for example we had someone doing cons the um task of building and they weren't that good at it um all right so that's work tab someone's not good at something they will botch it you'll race waste the resources and it's important i think more so for the construction task if you want them to, if you want to build something expensive like a generator or a solar panel, um, if they're not good at construction, you could waste your steel or your, you know, wood or stuff like that. So um, it's good to set this up initially. And anytime you get someone new in your base, be sure to come in here and adjust these or what they are good at. You know, offload some of the work on some of the other people. Put the hauling on the new guy if he's not good at that. Um, uh, you know, new stuff or, or you can make the new guy be the cleaner you know make him do all the shit work um charlie work so to speak so that's the work tab <laughs> <laughs>